face to the game. He is uh, huge in this game. Yes, he, you know, he was tall in the last game, but in this game, he is beefy. To me, the overarching thing here is he feels like you're controlling it like a boss now. Awesome. Like, he, he feels like an absolute boss, like a Goro, Kentaro style sub boss, and it's super cool to play. Cool. All um, right, well, let's talk more about, uh, let's talk about like his, sort of, you wanna, I, I know that, you, that you're very excited about this, Steve. Yes. So let's do a Steve's Lore Minute. A lot of people have asked over the last couple of years, where was Kotal Kahn during the original games? Right. And I have words straight from Dom himself. This is my most time I've ever been for a lore minute. <laughs> he was a general for Shao Kahn, and Shao Kahn viewed him as a threat and actually locked him away in Shang Tsung's flesh pits, where he was experimented on. And when Shang Tsung died, he was released. And that's why he was able to return to his position and why he wasn't in the classic games. You hmm. see? Fans thought it was a plot hole. Mm -mm. No, sir. It's lore. Ladies and gentlemen, that was... Steve's Lore Steve. Minute. Wait, wait, where'd you kind of die off there? Steve's Lore Minute. That was Steve's Lore Minute. Yeah. Steve's Lore Minute. There you Sorry. go. All right. Awesome. So, uh, archetype-wise. I would call him a brawler in this game. In the last game, he was a 50-50 character. He had a really, really good overhead, to mm. say the least. <laughs> and he had a really, really good look. <laughs> and... <laughs> Sorry. That's all you were doing. And... <laughs> In this game, I would say he's more of a mid-range footsie character, which is a common theme, that uh, he uses his weapon all the time, and he's really good in the mid-range, and it seems like, as we were just saying, like everyone's really digging it, and he plays into that because he's a master of weapons. He also has quite possibly a top five move for me ever in this. Like, we got to save that for a loadout three. Then we, yeah, are, we should in the trailer. Well, chill, Oh, dude. yeah. Oh, yeah. But still, I mean, like... But yeah. still. We'll, we'll, when we get to it, I'll, they'll right. know. They'll know if they know my styles. So like. let's let's start off with his gameplay. Um, he has a lot of really good strings in the mid range. Back two two three has a ton of range. Ends with an overhead. Ends with an overhead. Four two. If he's the butt of his sword, he advances a lot before going into it. I'm a big fan. He's got a big boot, big a big boot. leg. It's like sweet chin music. He's got a low combo starter. He does not have an overhead combo starter. So again, a the theme with this game is characters have like a really good low overhead but then the other one's not so great, so he'll use his standard hop attack. What's up with that dino head back there, bro? It's Goro's Lair, yes. Oh, one thing we didn't mention, we have added, we've been we've been asked for it, more stages have been yes. added, yep. Goro's Lair here. i uh, got a couple more as well. We will be having some background bre background breakdowns, always oh, hard, hard to say, say. Uh, very soon. We were going to do it this week, but uh, the guys who are going to do it are at GDC. <laughs> so, we'll get there. So another one of his strings, I think it's one of his best range strings because it's super fast, is his forward one. The downside is it starts with a high, so it'll lose to a down attack, but it's a, you can see it advances super fast. It kind of slaps you. And this one is actually... All right, Steve, just go as fast as you can. A crushing blow. That leads to a pop-up if it counter hits. So that would mean at the mid-range, if you think they're going to throw out a slow attack, like maybe Sub-Zero is going to do his back too, you go ahead and throw that out. If you get the counter hit, you're going to get a pop-up. You might not be a tournament player anymore. Like, that's obvious, right? But mm -hmm. there is no one better at working the menu screens than you. Menu it's execution. practice. Let's check out his throws. Do you just grind menu uh, working? No, it just comes naturally. Wow. All right, so let's go over his special moves. That's kind of a taste of his normal attacks, which are... You really can't go wrong at mid-range. He... Oh, another cool thing is those daggers, the snake daggers. He now uses them more. You can see he uses them for top combos attack and, and combos and stuff. Like when, you, when you start a match with Kota, like right from this distance, like yeah. what is your, what, is your, what, are your, what are you thinking? If you know that they're not going to do like a low attack, you can't go wrong with starting with four and one. But then if you read that, you can do his down four. Oh, that's good. You could go for a jump in. You could go for his forward two, which is on the slower side, but that's what complements the forward one. Gotcha. So let's go over his special attacks. Yep. The key ones from MKX are back with new animations, and they're slightly different, but the core of them's back. Like, we talked about his dagger, it's his parry's back. He can hold it. If the opponent attacks, he'll absorb the attack. And then, have, uh, and then he can have his advantage and go for a combo. Yep. The disc is back. Ooh. It's super fast in this one. It does a lot of damage. I love the effect of it breaking on the body. Yeah, that looks super cool. Really nice. His sunbeam is back. If he's standing in it, he actually gets life back. Nice. Then he has several new moves, which this is one of my favorites, the saw move. 
it's a great combo under, and it's just just absolutely nasty looking. There, there, there was something kind of in, in MKX where he went over and did yes. a soft. Right. This is this this lifts him straight up, which I think is awesome. So this has a crushing blow. If the move hits as an anti-air and counter hits, which oh here we go, there we go, a counter hit or a punish as an anti-air, you get a crushing blow, and he gets significantly more damage. And then he has. This Ooh. really, I love the effects here. Say the, the effects are amazing. So he's on that. Opening up the ground. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a hell of a ground pound. So those are his base moves, and I, as always, set up three loadouts. So let's go through that. One of our lights popped off. That's yeah. great. Even We're the lights live, are pal. popping off. We're live, pal. <laughs> We're popping off. We'll fix that momentarily. All right, so, so <laughs> the first one I gave him is an amplified sun disc where he uses a beam of light from the sun, which is canon here in Goro's Lair. You can see it on right, Goro's right, right, corpse, right. right? He's just reflecting And it's it a off. full screen beam attack. That's probably why Goro died, is because he got burned. A lack of sun. sunlight? Right. Oh, he got yeah, burned he, or a yeah, lack I mean, of sunlight? I mean, sunlight right on him. This is not a lore minute. I do think it's it's nice to think that the prince died in his home. You yeah. know, like that's how I want to die. He had a like, peaceful death. In my right. chair. You know, in your lair. In my lair, right. My apartment, my lair. With just my little Oni buddies around. Mm -hmm. Right. Anyway, this loadout I based on totems. So he has four total totems in total. You can equip two at a time. So I went with this one, which gives him a damage buff. Mm -hmm. So you can see here's the damage on the string 154. I have this bad boy out. It's doing 184. Okay. Now here's the new feature. So that's very similar to MKX, mm -hmm. but. We always try to advance things. You can actually now stack totems. Stack them totems! How many you can, can you stack? You can stack up to three times. So let's look at the damage now. And, yeah. and that'll yeah. add each buff. Wow. You can also stack multiple totems. So this totem is his blood absorb, the blood god totem, where every time he hits you, the blood gets absorbed in the totem. And when it times out, that'll actually go to Kotal's health. You'll see all the blood he's absorbing. And when it times out, he's going to get health back. So but you can full actually health do right it. now, so... Yes. Yeah. But <laughs> So you can have this totem out, then a damage one, and then another damage one, or vice versa, or three Ooh. of one. So he has four different totems you can choose from. For another one that I didn't equip, it's really cool. It buffs his region stamp, his stamina region. Uh -huh. So if you're using meter burn attacks all the time, because why wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. He has significantly faster region. That's pretty awesome. And you said you can only have two of those out at right. a time. Four totems that you can choose from. You can have two that you choose. And then you can have three that you can stack, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. You can mix and match as you please. Yep. And it just looks cool to stack the totems. Like, look at that. Yeah. The math was definitely confusing to me just okay. then. All right. So there <laughs> I'm just are... I, I get it. All right. All right. So <laughs> let's go to a second loadout. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of this one. Are you a fan of pretty much all of them, Steve? This one I'm really into. Oh, super fan. Gotcha. Because this is my cat loadout. Oh, it looks oh, so man. cool. He turns into a jaguar, and he has this full screen lunging attack that goes into this awesome thing. And he just eats your throat real quick. Yeah, I mean that's what cats do, right? Yeah, yeah. They go straight for the jugular every time. Then we didn't see this in the trailer. He actually has an air one where he does this party crasher move, turns into a cat, and then rolls away. That's awesome. And this is great for you know faking and jumpins or jumping over fireballs and punishing them. And then lastly, I gave him this sundial move, which controls the air, and when he amplifies it, he gets this big burst that'll knock the person down. You can do it as a combo ender, as a guaranteed anti-air if you read they're going to jump. Sure. And just to bring sunshine to the room. Aww, mm -hmm. that's sweet. That's sweet, I like that. Maybe most important of all. Yeah, yeah. I think so. It's well, the friendships we made along the way. He's a just and benevolent Khan in a way. Like, he's kind of a tyrant, but he's better than Shao Kahn. Oh, and absolutely. I think he would bring sun... I must bring sun to my Ash Tech. What a, what a compliment. He's better than Shao Kahn. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that is a compliment. <laughs> yeah. All right, so what about one more loadout? Sure. Yeah. This is your loadout. Yes. Ooh. I'm also, this is my skin that I use. Okay. Just previewing everyone. This is my skin. Oh, yeah. Oh. What, what, what exactly is on his head? That's a bear head. A bear head. That's a bear he personally killed. Okay. Okay. So. This loadout, the first thing I gave him was a different amplified discus throw, where he actually literally does a discus throw. And you can actually do this up close, and it'll, uh, the swing hits. It's a, awesome. So it's a good combo winner for damage, and it just looks funny. Then I gave him this pop-up attack, the sunlight uppercut, which is like one of his main combo starters. It's kind of like it's towards two or whatever. Yeah, it's very right? similar to this was towards two in the last game. 
and then a command grab, which is so good. This is the move, that, I mean, the, the amplified version of this move is so amazing. So, when he drinks blood, he gets a buff. You can see his <laughs> tattoos are glowing, and that gives him a damage buff. He can stack it three times. Every time you do it, the tattoos are going to glow longer, and the buff lasts longer. Now you can see he'll be at max level. His tattoos are hella glowing, and now he gets this damage buff. And it lasts a, a pretty good amount of time. So, the more command grabs you do, the more stronger you get. And he has tick throws, just like you'd expect. His down one. Explain tick throws for those who don't know what that means. The idea there is you're doing a normal attack that the opponent blocks, and you cancel into the command grab, and the opponent's still gonna be blocking, and they'll actually get grabbed. So for example, with 4-3-4, With 4-3-4, four, four, it's an advancing two-hitting string, so the opponent's going to want to keep blocking. You can go into that, and it'll actually go into the throw. So the opponent has to let go of block to, like, uppercut you or hop attack out, which means you can then go into doing the whole string. Got it. And this is another one that's really good. So those are my Kotalkan loadouts. I would say he's... Pretty similar to the flavor of MKX, great range, the command grabs back, the, the totems are back. Right. But with the new discus moves, there's a couple other abilities. The cat stuff by oh, far the I so mean cool. imagine not equipping the cat move. I can't. I don't want to live in well, that. Well that's world. the thing though, there's so many But like... you can't, yeah. If you are crazy and wacky and you hate cats, so you're a bad person, you could not use the cats. Was that too much? We'll yeah. Do. I mean we'll I'm kind much. of a dog person, really. Mm -hmm. I mean yeah. yeah. Well I yeah. like dogs too, it's just cats are obviously superior. Okay. Okay, okay. moving on. Cat Catwoman main talking yeah. here, too. So, yeah, let's, let's keep that in mind. We uh, always like to talk about who's gonna who, you know, what character archetype people like. Mm. To me, he's a grappler and just an absolute brawler. Like again, it, it playing him. I was playing with uh, Matt in the QA lab the other day, and we were just giggling playing Kotal because he's just an absolute powerhouse. Like, his animations are awesome. He's a little on the slower side, but his damage and his range make up for it. It just it feels like you're controlling a Shao Kahn or a Goro or one mm. of those just monsters, like Moloch. Like a boss. Yeah, it's I'm awesome. I'm excited to see a full-on Kahn battle. Like... Mm. Yeah, I, I have. We You've that was the match, that? the match we were playing with Shao Kahn versus Kotal Kahn, and we were just laughing constantly. At just <laughs> these hosses. It's, it's Andre the Giant versus like Big Show. If that had been possible, King it's, Kong Bundy, maybe. Yeah, the late great, the late great King yeah. Kong Bundy. Here we go with this. Awesome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, awesome. So Kotal Kahn mm -hmm. in the 